In today's video, we're going to be playing Minecraft on Zorin OS. If you don't know what Zorin OS is, it's a really good operating system for low-end PCs. It's based off Ubuntu, and yeah, I've heard really good things about it. It looks really good, kind of like Windows 11 in the kind of aesthetics of it. We're going to be trying out today, seeing what it's like for general productivity and gaming, and seeing what kind of FPS we get on Minecraft using Zorin OS. If you're new around here, make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you're new. And let me know in the comments if you tried Zorin OS before and what your favorite distro is anyway without further ado let's get into the video all right guys so to get zorin os we need to get it from their website i'll leave a link to it in the description down below here we go here is zorin os so yeah it's an alternative to windows and mac os it's based on ubuntu i believe version of linux and this is kind of what it looks like here it's a really nice clean design and it can definitely inject new life into old and low-end computers so yeah, if we want to go ahead and get it, just press download here. There's a couple of different versions of Zorin OS you can get. You can get Zorin OS Pro, which you have to pay for. It's 39 pounds. I'm not really too sure how much that is in dollars. And then we've also got two other versions here, Zorin OS Core and Zorin OS Lite. Now Zorin OS Lite is really good for low end PCs. It says here it can support PCs up to 15 years old. So this can pretty much run on any computer Zorin OS Lite. And I've used this on low end PCs myself and it's really good, especially on old netbooks and stuff. Really good for that. But in this video, I'm going to be installing Zorin OS Core because we're going to be installing this on my eBay gaming PC, which is kind of like a mid-range spec computer. So yeah, to download it, you just press download here. You can subscribe to their newsletter if you want or just skip to the downloads. I've already got it here, so I'm just going to go ahead and drag that to my desktop. It's an ISO image file. So what you need to do is you need to get a blank USB stick and you need to put it in your computer. There we go. So next up, we need Rufus. If you haven't got Rufus, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. So here, as you can see, our USB has been selected automatically here. And we just need to select our ISO image and basically burn the ISO to our USB. All right, so just select the ISO here. I'm going to leave all of these settings on the default. And yeah, just press start. I'm going to go for the recommended here. Just press OK to that. Press OK to this message. This basically, you agree that all the stuff on your USB stick is going to be erased. Burn the ISO to it, and I'll be back once it's done. All right, so Rufus has just finished burning Zorin OS to my USB. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. I'm going to unplug the USB, and now we're going to put it in our other computer, get switched over, and install Zorin OS. All right, so my PC is just turning on here. I'm going to go ahead and press the BIOS key here. And yeah, basically, I'm just going to change the boot order here to my SanDisk USB. Alternatively, I could have just gone into the boot menu here and selected UEFI SanDisk. First of all, you're greeted with this menu. Go ahead and try Zorin OS. And the good thing about Zorin OS or just Linux in general is you can actually use it off the USB. You don't have to go through any kind of install menu or anything like that. You can literally just try out Zorin OS before you even install it. So yeah, I'm just going to let it do its thing and I'll be back once we're in Zorin OS. And here is what I mean. On first install, you've got this option here. You could try Zorin OS or you can just straight up install it. So if we press try Zorin OS here, so as you can see here, it's gone into a desktop environment. So this you can kind of get familiar with Zorin OS and see what it's all about. So it's very much like Windows. We've got a taskbar down here. We've got a start menu and stuff here. We've got some pre-installed stuff, which Zorin OS does receive quite a lot of criticism for. Lots of like pre-installed apps and stuff. But if you're really that bothered, you could probably just uninstall them. So yeah, we've got quite a lot of stuff here. We've got Firefox pre-installed, which is pretty cool. We've got some Office stuff here. We've got LibreOffice, which a lot of people use. It's very popular. And then we've got some other kind of miscellaneous stuff. System tools. You can change the appearance and stuff. Some utilities as well, if you need that. We've got our file explorer here. And then down here, we've got the calendar. We've got the date and the time. And then we've got some settings and stuff here for like the sound. We can quickly go into our settings here as well. And then you can also manage like Wi-Fi and stuff here. But I've got an Ethernet connection, so I'm all good. And you can change your keyboard down here as well. So yeah, in settings, we've got network settings, pretty much everything you need, really. You can change your desktop background as well. Bear in mind, we haven't even installed Zorin OS yet, and it's letting us do all of this. Comes with some really nice wallpapers, actually. These look really good. And yeah, here's our applications here. So you can go through them all here. Quite a lot 
for this kind of Linux distro. But if you bear in mind who this is for, this is for people that are maybe not too familiar with Linux or just kind of dipping their toe in the water. This is really, really good kind of hybrid between Windows and Linux, basically getting used to it all. Mouse and keyboard settings, you can set up printers, all kinds of things, really. This is really good for productivity. And yeah, we're going to be trying gaming on it. These are the specs that I'm running on. We've got Intel Core i5, 4460, Intel HD graphics, and we've got eight gigabytes of RAM. Ram. That is pretty much Zorin OS, just in a nutshell, basically. So to install it, just double click on the desktop icon here, install Zorin OS. So installer is pretty basic. You just select your language. So yeah, there's a couple of options and stuff here that you can select. All right, next step is how you want to install your operating system. So you can install it alongside Windows or erase the disk and install it by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and select that option, press install now, and yeah, just confirm all of this. All right, so now that it's installing, we basically just select uh, our country, our time zone. So that's correct. So go for UK and then you just make a user account. And uh, yeah, that's everything all set up. So it's not like Windows, we don't have loads of telemetry questions and privacy and all this stuff. None of that, just time zone account and just let it finish up installing. All right, so it's just finished installing and we've just restarted the computer. And here we go, welcome to Zorin OS 16.1. So yeah, that's the latest version at the time of recording. We can start a guided tour of the operating system, but I'm not gonna do that. So yeah, here is Zorin OS and it's very much like Windows. We've got Firefox that comes pre-installed here. And yeah, it's just a really clean looking operating system, really. So there's different desktop layouts you can go for with Zorin OS. So you can go for this Windows 10 light thing here, or you can select here and you can actually see the name of the application you've got open. Or you can go for this kind of central version here. This is very much like Windows 11 with all your stuff in the middle here. And then we've got this fourth one here, which is kind of like Ubuntu, I guess, with the uh, applications on the left here. So yeah, that's pretty cool how it lets you select different appearances. And you can also get more desktop layouts if you upgrade to their pro version, which obviously you've got to pay for. As for theme and customization, you can select your accent color and stuff here. You can change the backgrounds. You can change between light and dark mode as well here. So I've gone for dark modes, much better for my eyes. You can also change fonts and stuff as well. This really customizable. We can also just right click on the desktop and just change our wallpaper here as well. Got some really nice wallpapers to choose from here. So yeah, let's go ahead and install Minecraft. Now to install Minecraft on Zoran OS, it's pretty simple. So there's actually a thing here called software. And here is where you can get all the software for Zorin OS. So you can get stuff like Spotify. You can get Audacity. So if we go to the search bar here and just type in Minecraft, as you can see, Minecraft comes up here. And yeah, this is the flat pack version of Minecraft. So this is the one we want. And you just press install. It's as easy as that. Not a single command executed. All right, here we go. 1.8.9. Let's launch it. And here we go, 1.8.9 Minecraft on Zorin OS. That was really easy to install. So let's just go into our video settings here. Turn off VSync, put our frame rate up, and just put our render distance on a sensible render distance. And yeah, we'll turn on this as well. That's also good for FPS. And yeah, it's pretty standard settings. Let's create a single player creative world and see what kind of FPS we get using Zorin OS. All right, here we go. That actually loaded up really quickly. Let's go ahead and press good old F3. And this is the FPS we appear to be getting. We're getting about 60 FPS. Yeah, pretty solid 60 FPS. Oh, we went a little bit below there. But yeah, perfectly playable. Lots of people would die for 60 FPS and we're just straight up getting it vanilla without even tweaking any settings or getting Optifine or anything like that. So yeah, this is pretty impressive. Playable, it's good. So yeah, let's... Uh, Put some sensible settings on now it's graphics fast turn this off turn off clouds we'll make this normal sized and the brightness up maybe turn down our render distance just a little bit let's see now 100 hey 100 we've pretty much doubled our fps just by doing a couple of settings pretty impressive so yeah this feels a lot smoother now 
much better. Let me just turn down my sensitivity because that is really hyper speed. Yep, we can go into full screen, no problem. There's a little bit of an issue where your cursor gets a bit locked, so you just have to go into your inventory. I believe it's a problem with Linux. I've had it on all distros I've had before, especially with two monitors as well. It's a bit of a pain, like your cursor will go over to your second monitor. But yeah, if anyone knows how to fix that, definitely let me know in the comments. But yeah, this is really playable, really smooth Minecraft experience. So we've got our dot minecraft as well here so to get to your dot minecraft i kind of cheated there i just went into my resource packs folder but yeah it's under app com dot minecraft dot minecraft resource packs all right so we kind of have to do some terminal stuff now i'm going to go ahead and try and get optifine for zorin os but we need to get java first so you could probably install it from their website but i'm going to just do it on the command line because it's quicker let's open up terminal here and yeah we're going to go sudo apt-get so we're going to go sudo apt install open gdk and um, we're going to get version 11 because why not and we'll get java runtime environment press enter type in your password and yeah just press y continue and yeah this will install java for us so yeah that was what like one command there we go so that's java installed so now if we try and open up our Optifine jar installer, it blocks it because it's not executable. So just right click on it, click on properties, go to permission and make sure you check this box, allow executing file as program. Now just try and double click on it and here we go, Optifine. All right, and then you just press install. I just had to change my directory there and Optifine is successfully installed, nice. All right, so I've just installed Optifine on Zorin OS. As you can see here, we've got loads of settings to mess around with. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and turn all of these down and give us the best FPS we possibly can and we'll see how much we can get then. And yeah, we're getting about 250 FPS. This is probably the best I think I've ever seen this computer, honestly, with good FPS. So yeah, I'm actually really impressed with that. Zorin OS, it does have quite a few background processes compared to other Linux distros. But if you want just a lightweight operating system, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's far lighter than Windows or anything like that. It's definitely worth checking out. Uh, my FPS is insane. It's really good now that I've got Optifine and turned down some settings. And yeah, just to prove I'm still on Zorin OS. Here you go. So there is actually a built-in activity monitor that comes with Zorin OS. You can find it in utilities here, system monitor. And these are all the processes basically. So there isn't actually that many. Like I mean in Windows, there's you have to scroll down a fair bit. So there's stuff like Firefox, which I probably shouldn't have open. Minecraft Launcher, Java, and then some other stuff as well, which I don't really understand. You experts out there probably know what all of this means. But yeah, now that I've closed Firefox, let's try out Minecraft again. 400 FPS we got there. Yeah, we've gotten to about 270 so yeah i'm pretty impressed with the performance let's try the latest version and then let's try and do some pvp on this system all right let's just take a quick look and see how 1.19 will perform on zorin os so yeah it's probably not going to perform well because we haven't got optifine or fabric or whatever you guys use on the latest version but it'll be interesting to see we can get at least 60 fps i'll be quite happy with that but let's see here let's make a new world and see what we get all right so i just loaded up a world on minecraft 1.19 the latest version as of recording and yeah guess the fps boom look at that like i said i was happy if i had to get 60 but we're getting about 80 average about 80 and it seemed to have remembered all of my video settings and stuff from 1.8 and yeah this is honestly pretty playable obviously i'd have to get fabric or optifine or something but it works really well we just go into full screen here see what kind of fps we get oh we get even more in full screen that is our fps on the latest version for all the people in the comments out there who are wondering yeah pretty happy with that all right now comes the big test what is pvp like on 1.8 on zorin os and the short answer perfectly fine honestly my fps is really good getting about 150 minimum we're on 1.8 optifine right now we're not on a client or anything so my pvp feels a little bit scuffed but yeah, still perfectly good. My sensitivity is a bit weird. Can we still beat this guy? Come on. There we go. GG. That guy was a diamond three as well. Wow. So yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. A lot of people seem to like my playing Minecraft on videos on this channel. So I thought I'd try out Zorin OS because a lot of people have been telling me in the comments to check it out. So let me know what else you want to see. I'm definitely going to try an old version of Windows very soon. I was going to try one for this video, but I just couldn't get it working. But yeah, I'm pre-recording quite a lot of videos right now because I am actually going on holiday. So by the time you see this, I'll probably be away. What is this guy doing? Like, 
like 360 trick shots or whatever. Can we still beat him? His aim's all over the place like mine. What's going on? Hey, there we go. GG. Wow, we haven't actually lost a duel. That's just the power of Zorin OS right there. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys all for watching. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed. And let me know if you've tried Zorin OS before and if it's helped you on your PCs out there. Thank you guys all for watching and I'll see you later. Peace.